there, I'm Kath. Welcome to my channel Made by Cathcraft. Thank you so much for joining me today for my November makes video. In this video, I've got a few sewing makes to share and I've got a couple of knitting makes to share too and I'll pop my knitting makes at the end of the video. But I've really enjoyed my sewing and knitting projects this month and I'm looking forward to sharing them with you. But before I start talking about what I've been making, I thought I'd share as usual what I'm wearing today. So today is quite a cold overcast day out there. So I decided to put on a snuggly sweater and I made this sweater using this pattern here. It is the Nina Lee South Bank sweater pattern. It is a pattern for jersey fabrics and you can make it in three different sort of lengths. There's a sort of dress length with a band at the bottom, a sort of classic jumper length that comes to about your hips and a sort of cropped version here. And it's a really nice pattern with a funnel neck. So super cozy and slightly dropped shoulders. And um, I've made this version here, sort of version two, which is a sort of hip length version. But I've made just one change to add a band at the bottom to make it a bit more like a jumper. And um, the version I'm wearing, it, I made in this really lovely um, cotton jacquard fabric that I got quite a while ago from Guthrie Garney. It's got kind of like a marley sort of base and it's got these cute um, stars on in sort of a, I don't know, a coral and a mustard and a sort of turquoisey colour. And it always makes me feel quite jolly to wear this one with the stars on. I actually um, managed to sew the collar the wrong way up, so the stars point a different way on the collar, but I don't think you really notice that too much. Um, it's really comfy and cosy to wear, and it sews up quite quickly too, so it's a nice, um, quick, um, perfect pattern for winter. And in terms of sizing, I made the size 8, um, which is for bust. 34 inches, waist 26 inches and hips 35 and a half inches. And that's pretty much my um, waist and hips measurements. My bust measurement is slightly smaller, it's a 32 and that kind of corresponds to the size six. But actually I quite like the fit of the size eight on me. It gives a little extra room around the bust for kind of putting your t-shirt underneath and not being too tight. And I do find that knee and knee patterns come up quite fitted on the whole. So I didn't bother grading down the bust and I quite like the fit. I'll put up a picture so you can see how it looks on. It's a really comfy, relaxed one to wear and it's quite snuggly in this jacquard fabric too. Um, and in terms of sizing, the pattern has a good size range. I've got the size 6 to 20 version, UK size 6 to 20, but there's also a size 16 to 28 version too. But yeah, it's a really nice one. I've got a few um, South Bank sweaters. I've got a couple of the cropped ones and a couple of dresses and they're always perfect for this cold type of weather where you want to be a little bit snuggly. But that's what I'm wearing today. So the first garment I've got to share with you that I made in November is actually a remake of a pattern I'd originally made when I was quite early in my sewing journey. And I made this garment and I wore it quite a lot because I really liked it and it ended up wearing out. So it's really nice to revisit it this month and remake that garment. And it's a garment I made using this pattern here, which is the Moss Skirt pattern by Grainline Studio. It's a really nice, quite simple skirt pattern. Um, it's semi-fitted and its waistband falls just below your natural waist. It's got a, um, a fly front and a button closure. It's got slash pockets and a yoke at the back. And you can either make it as a mini length or you can sort of turn it into a knee length version by adding this hemp band at the bottom. And it's designed to be made in medium to heavyweight fabrics. So things like denim, it'll make a really nice classic denim skirt, I think or corduroy, or twill, or wool. Um, in terms of sizing, it doesn't have the greatest sizing ever, this pattern. It goes from a size zero to a size 18, and the largest size is waist 37 inches, and hips 47 inches. And the version I made originally was in this quite bright royal blue kind of coloured corduroy fabric. It's quite a chunky corduroy fabric. And I originally bought this fabric, I was quite new to sort of online fabric shopping, and I planned to make a pinafore, but when it arrived, it was a lot brighter than I expected. I was expecting more of a navy blue colour. So I thought it might be a bit too bright as a pinafore, but it might look really nice as a skirt. So I looked around for a suitable skirt pattern and I came across this Grainline Studio pattern and I quite like the simplicity of it. So I decided to give it a go. And it was a bit of a um, tricky one for me because it's an intermediate pattern and it has some sort of tricky features like the fry front. And I was quite new to sewing. So my first version wasn't the most beautifully sewn garment ever but I still really enjoyed wearing it. So when it wore out, I was quite sad. So I decided to get make a new version and the same fabric. And I got this um, corduroy fabric from Minerva. It's a similar kind of chunkiness to my original version. So it makes a quite a nice cozy, substantial skirt. So here's my second version here. In terms of um, how I chose to make this, um, I chose to make this version with a hem band, but I actually cropped off the top part a little bit. So it ended up being somewhere in between a mini length and a knee length, and I quite like the length it is. 
And my second version, I actually just fine tuned a little bit. I found my first version, the waistband came up a bit big. So I just graded in the waist for my second version. So I ended up making a size zero at the waist um, and, and then graded up to a size two at the hips. And the size zero at the waist is actually 25 for 25 inch waist and I'm a 26 inch waist. But I think that's probably because I quite like to wear it sitting on my waist rather than a bit below. And so if I took it in slightly, it sits where I want it to sit. And my second version is just better made in general. I was more confident doing the fly front. And also I have an overlocker now, so I could overlock all my inside seams. So it's got a nicer, sort of neater finish. So I'm really happy to have remade this skirt. I think it's a really nice colour and it goes with a lot of the kind of jumpers I've got in my wardrobe. And I'll put up a picture so you can see me wearing it. Um, in this picture, I am wearing it with a Molly top from Sew so Over It. It's from their ebook i think it's called their city break ebook and it's a really nice top and i think that top with the stripes goes really well with the blue skirt so i'm really pleased to have remade this skirt and i know i'll be getting a lot of wear out of it in winter it's a really nice cozy one to wear and if you're interested in, in this pattern i find grain line studio instructions are really nice to follow they're quite um to the point there's not they're, they're not not the wordiest instructions ever i guess but they're really um clear and concise and easy to follow and i found the whole process of inserting the fly front even when i was quite a new sewer when i made this first time round, it did they did make it quite easy and if you're looking for another option, I also think the Tilly in the Buttons nest skirt has a really similar silhouette to this one too, and a couple of different options. Instead of a band at the bottom, it's got a longer length option, I think, possibly with a split. split. But it's a really nice kind of classic, simple skirt, and hopefully I'll be able to wear this one a lot. Again, it may even wear out as well. <laughs> So my next make I've got to share with you is not actually the winteriest of makes, but I do have plans for how to style it for winter. And I made it using this pattern here, which is the Lotta dress pattern by Tilly in the Buttons. It's one of Tilly's patterns for beginners. It's quite a simple make and it's a really flexible one too because you can make it in either woven or jersey fabric, which I think is pretty cool. I'll show you the line drawings. So it's got quite a blousy bodice with grown on short sleeves or you can add on a longer bracelet sleeve option. Then it's got an elasticated waist and a flared skirt and you can add on patch pockets if you want. And in terms of sizing, it goes from a size UK 6 to 24. And I decided to make my version in some really pretty viscose fabric that I'd got from Rainbow Fabrics in the summer. And this is the fabric here. It's really lovely. It's got kind of a navy base with these really pretty sort of powdery pink and blue colours on. And I got it in the summer, but I'd been umming and ahhing about what to make. And then I finally decided I would make the Lotta dress and I wanted to get it sewn up before I changed my mind. And so I could actually start wearing it because it's such lovely, soft, pretty fabric. So I made my Lotta dress as a short sleeve version and I made a couple of changes to the pattern. Instead of a facing for the neckline, I decided to make bias binding in the same fabric and use that to finish the neckline because I find it gives a neater finish. And also I find the facing can be quite annoying because it can flap up a little bit. So I'm really happy with their bias bound neckline finish. I then decided to add in inseam pockets. I don't really think the patch pockets would work very well but on viscose because they would just hang down and adjust the shape of the dress and it wouldn't look great. But I do love having pockets. So I thought oh yeah, I'd add in these inseam pockets and I'm really pleased to have added those in. And then I also made a forward shoulder adjustment because I'd made this dress one time before and I felt on the shoulders the seam was falling back a little bit. So I brought that seam slightly more forward to fit me a little bit better. And I'm really pleased with my overall dress. In terms of sizing, I made the size two. I usually make a size two for Tilly patterns. So that is for a bust of 32 inches and a waist of 26 inches and hips of 35 inches. And I have a 36 inch hip, but there's loads of room in the skirt for this one because it's a kind of flared skirt. So I didn't really need to think about grading up the hips for this one. Um, and the other thing I did for this is I left the skirt to hang for quite a while because the skirt's cut, the, the side seams of the skirt are kind of cut on the bias. I did find they dropped quite a lot. So I left it to hang for at least a couple of days. And when I did go to even out the hem, I found it had dropped quite a lot at the edges. So I needed to trim that off to make it even. So it's worth waiting before hemming to get that all sorted. So I'll put a picture up of me wearing it. I really like how it's turned out. It's a really comfy one to wear, the Lotta. And I think the kind of simple style of it showcases this pretty fabric well. And I'll also put up a picture of how I plan to style it so I can start wearing it in winter. And I popped it here with a pair of black tights and also with um, a hand knitted cardigan I made, which I talked about, I think, in my last makes video. But yeah, I think that colour goes really well with the Lotta dress. So I'm really pleased with this dress and um, I really like it. And I hopefully it'll be one I'll be able to wear in winter as I've styled it, but also through to summer as well. 
So my next make is definitely a really wintry, cosy one. And I made it using some really lovely fabric that I've been eyeing up for a while. And it is a Mind the Maker fleece back sweatshirt fabric. And it's quite a pricey fabric, so I'd kind of been holding off buying it. But then I was lucky enough in the summer to win a £20 voucher from Lamazi Fabrics. So I used that voucher to put towards buying this fabric with a view to make this pattern here, which is the Hudson Pant pattern by True Bias. It's a really lovely jogging bottom pattern. It's my go-to jogging bottom pattern. It's got a fairly low rise waist, um, elasticated waist. It's got some nice pockets with a little feature cuff, um, a little feature kind of detail on. Um, and then it's got quite a slim fitting leg and cuffs at the bottom. And it's just a really comfy one to wear. Um, it comes in sizing, size zero to 18. Unfortunately, True Bias has released some of their patterns in extended size range. I think it's size 14 to 30 but this isn't one of the patterns that's been released in that extended size range yet, unfortunately. So the largest size is for a waist of 38.5 inches, hips 46.5 inches. But I've got quite a few versions of this pattern. It's so comfy, but most of my versions I've made in lighter weight French terry fabrics, which are really nice and comfy to wear, but I wanted to make a really snuggly version for when it's really wintry and cold. And I thought the Mind the Maker fleece back sweatshirt fabric would be perfect. So I bought um, the colorway Sienna, and it's this really beautiful chestnut colour. I think it's really pretty. And I also bought the matching ribbing. Um, I got the matching ribbing for Minerva because Lamazi didn't have this colour in stock at that point, but Minerva did stock the full range. So I got the matching ribbing too because I thought this fabric doesn't have the most stretch ever. And the Hudson Pants pa pattern recommends a stretch of approximately 25%. And I wasn't sure if this fabric had that much stretch. So I thought it'd be good to get the matching ribbing to go on the cuffs just so I can get it on um, over my ankles because the cuffs are fairly close fitting. See, I really enjoy sewing up my pair and here they are. Um, I left off the um, cord um, that you can add to the front because I thought it'd be really hard to find a cord that matched this colour and I didn't want to sort of add a contrasting cord because I wanted to just have a kind of simple pair where this colour was a sort of feature. So I left off the cord, I added the ribbing on the pockets and around the waist so it didn't end up too bulky. And I made the full length pair because you can make a yoga length pair as well, but I wanted these ones to be full length and cosy. And then in terms of sizing, I made the size two. That's my usual size I make on the True Bias Hudson pants. Actually, my waist is a size zero and my hips are a size four. But I think when I made my first version, I thought I'll just go for the size two and see how it turns out. And it's always been fine. But one thing I did do for this um, version was I made the legs a bit wider. I didn't actually trace the pattern piece out. Again, I just, when I put, pinned the pattern piece of the fabric, I just cut the legs with a slightly, um, about maybe an extra um, centimetre or so at each side. Just because I thought, because the fabric's not too stretchy, I still wanted to be able to bend my legs and everything. So I added a bit more volume in the, in the leg. And I'll put, up a pair, my, I'll put up a picture of me wearing them so you can see how they look. I'm really happy with how they turned out. They're super snuggly. The fabric is lovely with this fleecy inside and really substantial. So it makes a perfect pair of joggers for deepest, darkest winter. I was tempted. There's a, a um, tutorial on the True Bias website to turn these into a high-waisted pair of um, joggers instead because the waist is sort of more mid-rise to low-rise. And I was tempted to make it more high-rise, but I didn't want to kind of make too many changes because this fabric is such a nice and quite expensive fabric. I just decided to keep it simple and make the version I made already. But I would at some point like to give the high rise version a go too. But I'm really pleased with how they turned out. I really love the rich rust colour. And if you're looking for a really cosy, substantial fleece back sweatshirting fabric, I'd really recommend this Mind the Maker fabric. It's perfect um, for cold winter days. So my next make I've got to share with you for November is probably my most involved make of the month because it's a mashup of two different patterns. And I made it using this really beautiful Atelier Brunette fabric that I got from Minerva. It's a really lovely viscose fabric. It's got this really dark base that's a really deep, dark navy colour called Indigo Night. And it's got this really pretty pattern on with sort of taupe and burnt orange colours. And I thought it would make a perfect dress. So I knew I wanted to make a dress, but I wasn't sure which pattern to use originally. I had thought of the Wilder gown, but I decided against that. And in the end, I decided to combine two different patterns. And you'll have seen a sneak peek of this, um, this dress and how I combine the patterns if you watch my November sewing and chat vlog, which I posted a couple of weeks ago. And I'll link below in case you fancy seeing a bit more of the detail of the construction of this dress. But I decided to use different, two different patterns. The first pattern I used was this pattern, which is the Megan Nielsen Sudley dress. It's a really pretty blouse and dress pattern with a keyhole opening at the front and ties. 
and I've made the blouse version a couple of times and I never made the dress. But I really fancied making a version with a collar. It's a really cute little sort of Peter Pan style collar. But I didn't really fancy making the dress version of this because it's a smock dress that's quite loose and I wasn't sure that was what I wanted for this fabric. So I decided to borrow this Peter Pan collar and put it on this pattern here, which is the Bakerloo dress by Nina Lee London. It's a really nice dress pattern. It obviously features a really large collar, but I thought a slightly more understated collar would suit this fabric. But in terms of the dress details, it's a dress with a gathered skirt and the bodice has got darts, so it's got a bit more shaping and it's a bit more fitted than the Sudley dress. And it's got these balloon sleeves with a ruffle at the bottom. And it's a really nice pattern I made before, so I knew it was a nice fit. So yeah, I decided to borrow this Sudley collar and put it on this dress. And this is how my version turned out. And I really love how it's turned out. So I used the Sudley collar, the Bakerloo um, dress, and I added on waist ties to add a little bit more cinching around the waist. I then it's got the keyhole opening of the Bakerloo dress too, with a little button closure here, as you can see. And then in terms of the sleeves, I'd originally cut out the Bakerloo sleeve pattern piece. But when I tried the dress on, I found the sleeve to be a bit too um, big. So I narrowed the sleeve off and I added a simple elasticated cuff. And I really like how that's turned out because I feel like this fabric needed a dress that's quite sort of simple and understated and I didn't want anything too, yeah, big or roughly, I guess. And I've added on the gathered skirt and it's got the pockets too in here. Oh, and in terms of the pockets, I didn't have enough of this fabric once I cut all the pattern piece out to um, have enough for the pocket bags. So I decided to add on some quite jazzy pocket bags um, in this leftover fabric I had from another project. I wanted to kind of use something I already had and I thought this ended up quite funky. So as you can see, it's got this... Um, yeah, really cool. It's mine the make a viscose twill in this kind of gold leopard print. And you can't really see it at all. Um, I ended up sort of sewing so that there's a bit of a um, lip of the main fabric. So it's, the pockets are fairly hidden. So only I'll know they're in there. But yeah, I'm really pleased with that little flash of fun kind of leopard print in there. I think that looks really nice. In terms of sizing, both the Bakerloo and Sudley dresses have really inclusive size ranges. The Sudley goes from a US size 0 to a size 30 because there's a Megan Nielsen curve range as well for this pattern and the Bakerloo goes from a UK 6 to a UK 28 so both really inclusive size wise patterns and I made the size but 6 at the bust of the Bakerloo pattern and I graded out to the size 8 for the waist and hips because that pretty much suited my measurements but I'll put a picture up of how the dress turned out it was quite a satisfying sew it was quite fun figuring out how to fit the Sudley collar pattern piece of the Bakerloo dress because the neckline is slightly different and I'm really pleased with how it turned out and I think it'll be one I'll really enjoy wearing this winter. And I like how I've done the sleeves fairly narrow with the elasticated cuff because I think that'll go nicely underneath um, cardigans if I want to keep a little bit more cosy wearing this dress. But yeah, it was a fun sew. The Atelier Brunette fabric was really lovely to work with and I'm really happy how, with how my pattern mashup turned out. So those were all the garments I sewed in November. But I've also got a couple of knitting makes to share with you too. And the first item I knitted this month is a hat. And I knitted this because I was waiting for some wool to arrive for a larger project i am now started, which is a cardigan. But the wool took longer to arrive than expected, so I was left with nothing to do. And I'm not very good at sitting on the sofa doing nothing. So I had a look through what wool I had left over from other projects. And I found some navy blue chunky yarn that I thought would work really nicely for a knitted hat. And I decided to use this pattern here to knit the hat, which is a pattern I already had. And it is the Cotton, Cat Cotton Candy Beanie by All About Amy. And I do like all about Amy patterns. And this hat is quite a simple hat, which is knitted with a rib border and it's knitted in moss stitch. And I do really love the texture of moss stitch. So I found this chunky navy yarn. And the only issue is that this pattern is designed for super chunky yarn. So I had to kind of adjust the pattern and alter it quite a bit to fit with my, um, my chunky yarn that wasn't super chunky. And I needed to use narrower needles too. So it ends up a little bit different to the pattern, but I'm really pleased with how it turned out. And here it is. So it's got this um, moss stitch texture, but slightly less chunky than the patterns intended with rib at the bottom and added on a pom-pom at the top. And this is a faux fur pom-pom that I got from an Etsy shop called Crafty Friends. And I bought pom-poms from them before and they're really lovely quality. And this, I think I can't remember what this colour was called. I think it was called Golden Fox or something, but yeah, it's a really lovely faux fur pom-pom, really snuggly. And I think it goes quite with the navy wool. So I'll put the pattern so you can see how it fits. I had to have a little play around um, with the with the number of stitches I needed to make sure it did fit my head fairly snugly and I knitted it in the round which is always nice so there's no seaming to do at the end but yeah I think it's a really cozy hat and I'm sure I'll get lots of wear out of it in winter it's quite chunky yarn so it'll be nice and cozy and that is my first knitting project 
I just had to sort my hair out a little bit then after taking that hat off before I shared with you my final knitting project for this month. And it is another pup from this book here, which is the Knitted Cats and Dogs book by Sue Stratford. And if you have seen my previous makes videos, you'll know I've been knitting my way through the knitted cats and now I'm onto the knitted dogs as requested by my children. And the dog I've been knitting this month is one requested by my daughter. And I'll show you which one it is. It's this really cute sweetheart pup here. She looks quite big in the picture, but she's designed to be quite tiny, only about nine centimetres high. And she's knitted using garter stitch and Aran wool. So quite a chunky wool. And so she knits up really quite quickly. And this actually is a perfect one if you're interested in getting into knitting different creatures and things. This will be a perfect starting point because it's just knitted in garter stitch. And it's small and quite simple, so it comes together quite quickly. And the book says it'll be perfect for something like a keyring charm. So I guess it'll be quite a nice Christmassy one actually for Christmas too. So that, as you can see, the pup in the book is in this sort of biscuit coloured Aran yarn. But my daughter, being my daughter, didn't want a biscuit coloured sweetheart pup. She wanted hers to be pink. And here is her little pup. I'm really pleased with how he's turned out. I don't know why I'm calling him he. He just looks like a little he to me. But he's got this big black nose, these cute little beady eyes. And he's all pink um, and teeny. And my daughter's really pleased with him. And I think he's really cute too. He was a fun, really quick one to knit up, actually. So that is Sweetheart Pup. And that's my last make I've got to share with you in this video. I've actually been busy with a couple of other projects this month, um, but they're Christmassy projects. So I thought what I would do is do a separate video sharing my Christmas makes for this year. So that'll be one coming separately. But I hope you've enjoyed this video sharing my November makes. I've really enjoyed talking about what I've been up to sewing and knitting wise. And if you have enjoyed the video, I would love it if you give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, then please would you consider subscribing to my channel? And if you do subscribe, and then if you press the bell icon, that'll make sure you're notified when my previous, my previous, my future videos come out. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely day and I'll see you again soon. Bye.